Though Dr. Liao needs no introduction as the leader of this effort, um, I will try my best to do so briefly. So she's an associate professor of ophthalmology and neurology at Stanford University and is the director of Center for Optic Distrusion at Stanford. She runs an active clinical and research lab at the Byers Eye Institute at Stanford and the Spencer Center for Vision Research. And she'll be speaking today on adult patients with optic disc drusen mechanisms of vision loss. Thank you so much, Heather. I have no financial disclosures. At the end of this talk, you will understand the most common presentations of optic disc drusen in adults. We will also talk about some mechanisms of vision loss in optic distrusion. Optic distrusion occurs often uh, in childhood, and they could look uh, like this uh, with uh, predominantly buried drusen. In adulthood, the drusens migrate anteriorly, uh, become larger, and can uh, obstruct uh, 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 nearby structures. I'm going to focus on the adult side, and Dr. Barris, who is speaking after me, will talk about pediatric optic distrusion. Let's start with a case. This is a 24-year-old Caucasian woman who had incidentally found optic distrusion for the last three years. She presents for vision evaluation. She has a history of migraine headaches, LASIK, and dry eyes. Her visual acuity is excellent. Her pupils are normal. There's no re relative afferent pupillary defect. Her intraocular pressures are normal, and her optic nerve photos uh, show um, obvious visible optic distrusions on both sides. Her visual feel uh, was um, pretty good. Uh, there is a few uh, spots inferiorly, uh, especially temporally. On um, blue autofluorescence imaging, you could see visible drusens, and she has some thinning of the retinal nerve fiber layer on both sides. Two years later, she develops new blurry vision in the left eye. Even though her vision is still 20-20, she now has a left relative afferent pupillary defect. This is her prior visual field, and this is her current left eye visual field, and she has a, a new inferior visual field defect. Let me show you what her uh, photo looked like. Uh, what you see on the right side of the screen is um, the uh, new um, manifestation of uh, optic disc edema and hemorrhage compared with the prior photos um, on your left. This is non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy associated with optic disc drusen. The white arrows point to some visible drusen that you could see peeking through the optic disc edema. The yellow points to the area uh, of uh, hemorrhage and the entire optic disc is swollen. This is another case of uh, nion without optic disc um, drusen. And you can see that there is also diffuse swelling, but there's less of a raised architecture. This patient's uh, retinal nerve fiber layer was thin prior to developing new vision loss, uh, just to show you the whole report. This is what it looks like during the um, active phase of uh, disease. And you can see the left retinal nerve fiber layer uh, being swollen. And there's a pseudo normalization of the measurements in the different quadrants. After this event, her retinal nerve fiber layer became even thinner compared with the um, baseline. Vision loss occurs in the majority of patients with uh, optic disc drusen, and is particularly prominent in those with superficial drusen. Uh, here's a paper from um, Stefan uh, from 19, uh, 2018 uh, that show um, a variety of different uh, prior publications and the percentage of optic disc drusen patients that have visual field defect. In adults, uh, they may have no symptoms. These are the patients who present incidentally from an optometrist evaluation or ophthalmologist evaluation. Uh, they may also have vision loss as the first presentation of optic distrusion. They tend to affect the peripheral vision more than the central vision. Instead of acute uh, vision loss, the vision uh, loss can be progressive over time. 
And in these patients, there's an increased risk of vision loss in the second eye, meaning both eyes may be affected, which really impacts quality of life. Here's an example of visual field defect uh, in um, a patient with um, uh, optic dystrusum uh, bilaterally. Uh, and here are examples of what optic dystrusum look like when it's mild, moderate, or severe based on the uh, abundance of uh, drusen. Uh, on the lower panel is the autofluorescence imaging, and you can see that there are more and more superficial drusens uh, uh, in different um, pa patients. Uh, greater number um, of uh, bright spots on autofluorescence, uh, just like more abundance on the OCT, is associated with increased risk of vision loss. So why do some people lose vision and some don't? Uh, there are uh, studies on this, uh, including uh, many members of the Optic Distrus and Studies Consortium. Uh, this includes older age, presence of superficial optic distrusion, the size of the drusen, genetics, vascular risk factors, anatomical risk factors like crowded discs, which is extra crowded in patients with drusen, sleep apnea, and certain features are found on OCT studies. So the question is, how can we predict who will lose vision in those with optic disc drusen? We perform a study of um, 53 uh, control eyes versus 29 optic disc drusen eyes. Uh, this paper uh, just um, uh, came out in American Journal of Ophthalmology. Uh, and the lead author is Dr. Yan Yan, who is also uh, helping us with our meeting today. The goals of our study is in patients with optic distrusion, which OCT and OCT angiography measurements best correlate with vision loss? And does OCTA add value beyond OC o OCT? We acquire a variety of data, including visual function, uh, and a battery of anatomical uh, and functional measurements uh, with both OCT and OCT and geography. The data is analyzed using a custom MATLAB script, um, uh, pi which is uh, developed by uh, members of Rick Wang's group uh, in University of Washington. Here are examples of um, a range of uh, optic disc drews and eyes all the way on the left is a control for comparison. And then in two, three, four, and five, uh, you see um, uh, more severe um, um, visual field loss. Uh, and uh, on, underneath, you can see examples of what it looks like on autofluorescence on OCT and then OCT and geography. There's an example of what NION looks like uh, to the right for comparison. What we did was we uh, used a custom uh, MATLAB script to remove the large vessels uh, and then process the data to look at uh, uh, six different measurements, including vessel area density, vessel skeletal or length density, uh, tortuosity of the vessels, uh, complexity, um, uh, the, the parametric uh, measurements, as well as the flow, or uh, we call flux. What we see is as you lose vision uh, going from left to right in these examples, there is a decrease in the heat map uh, consistent with a loss of vessel area density. Uh, there's also a decrease in vessel complexity uh, consistent with a change in the overall tortuosity of the uh, measurements. We looked at all the measurements uh, and did a uh, correlation um, uh, matrix. And what we see is that the mean deviation uh, on Humphrey visual field testing positively correlates with retinal nerve fiber layer, ganglion cell complex, and disc vessel area density measurements. In contrast, the mean deviation negatively correlates with um, macular vessel diameter and flux. We performed a principal component analysis and found that there were two, five key measurements that correlate with vision loss, in particular, a decrease in retinal nerve fiber layer, ganglion cell complex, and disc vessel area density, and an increase in macular vessel diameter and flux. We perform a hierarchical cluster analysis to look at all the eyes, and what we see um, are the following. Most control um, um, patients uh, and optic disc and eyes with no vision loss tend to cluster in the middle group. While the optic disc and eyes with mild visual field loss 
uh, are found in this bottom group here. And in this group, there's an increase in macular vessel diameter and flux. In optic distrusion eyes with um, severe vision loss, uh, there is a thinning of the retinal nerve fiber layer ganglion cell complex and disc vessel area density. So in summary, in adults with optic distrusion, uh, they're often found incidentally. Some adults present with acute or progressive vision loss, such as uh, ischemic optic neuropathy, like the example that I show. It could also present uh, in the setting uh, like glaucoma uh, or um, presenting as a vascular event, such as a central retinal artery or uh, vein occlusion. In adults, vision loss is correlated with these changes. Myovision loss uh, is associated with uh, increase in macular vessel diameter, meaning po uh, vasodilatation possibly related to autoregulatory mechanisms and an increase in flux. As patients lose vision, this leads to irreversible thinning uh, and decrease in retinal nerve fiber layer ganglion cell complex and the disc vessel area density. Does OCTA add value beyond OCT? Uh, we believe so. So just to put it all together, in adults with optic distrusion, uh, what they have is, uh, as they uh, age, an increase in the number of superficial drusens, increase in the drusen volume, uh, number of drusens, uh, increase in calcification, and uh, overall an increase in compressions uh, of the surrounding structure, leading to a compartment syndrome. The risk factors that uh, precipitate vision loss, either acutely or progressively, are likely related to the anatomy, aging, hypoxia, such as all the vascular risk factors, um, metabolic issues, uh, environmental contributions, genetics, and others. So the key for um, the adults with vision loss and optic distrusion is early diagnosis, which means we could intervene early uh, with uh, potential uh, beneficial treatment. That way we could save uh, patients' vision. I wanna thank the team who uh, did the work, uh, Dr. Yen Yen, uh, who is the first author on this study, um, Ali Shariati, who did a lot of the uh, data collection and contribution, Sangeetha, who's a new member of the team, uh, who is uh, jumping right into uh, running this meeting and uh, taking uh, a lead on the studies, Laura Stell, who is the um, biostatistician, and Ricky Wan and his whole team of uh, enthusiastic programmers and scientists. Thank you so much for your uh, attention. Thank you, Joyce. That's very beautiful work that you've done clinically. A couple of questions that have come up um, and specifically related to NAION in optic disc drusen. Um, so the first question is, if a patient can't provide a history of acute vision loss, so perhaps the field loss is mild, how can you differentiate if they've had ischemic optic neuropathy versus some other cause of vision loss related to their ODD? Um, good question. Um, I think we don't understand well enough uh, what uh, ischemic optic neuropathy looks like uh, in patients with optic distrusion yet, because um, it's possible that they're having many uh, nyan events uh, versus they're just having local uh, events that are not necessarily ischemic, but possibly hypoxic, metabolic, uh, or uh, other mechanisms. Um, I think the, the key is um, we're hoping uh, through collaboration of people who are uh, part of this meeting to identify uh, biomarkers that would be able to help us distinguish the two. So for example, is it possible to uh, visualize through vascular studies or looking at the level of um, perfusion or oxygenation uh, of a patient who is about to have the equivalent of a stroke, basically? And so um, I think structurally, we are not able to distinguish, but the key will be to look at functional measures of blood flow or um, um, vision measurement possibly uh, to help us distinguish the two. Wonderful. And one more quick question um, from Jeff O'Dell in New York. Are delivery or general surgery or hypotension and anesthesia a risk factor for NAION and ODD? Uh, we believe so. Uh, this has not been studied um, uh, very much, as you could imagine, um, because uh, a lot of patients with ODD are 
relatively uh, young and then they're follow over time. Uh, they're um, a very limited number of um, uh, very long-term perspective studies. Um, I would assume that uh, optic disc drusen is basically an extreme example of a crowded disc and that these patients are at risk for all the same uh, issues that a regular NION patient would with, without optic disc drusen. Great. Thank you so much, Joyce. That was great. 